France and South Korea have also got evacuation plans. But you need to prepare for and assume. Strongly warning Americans to avoid all non-essential travel to China. That this is going to be a real serious problem. France, Australia, Canada, the US, Singapore, Cambodia, Vietnam, the list goes on. Health officials are investigating more than 100 possible cases in the US. Germany, a man has uh, contracted the virus. The epidemic is a demon and we cannot let this demon hide. Japan, where a bus driver uh, contracted the virus. Coronavirus has killed more than 100 people there and infected more than 4,500. We have to prepare for the worst, always, because if you don't and the worst happens. War Room Pandemic. Here's your host, Stephen K. Bannon. It's Friday, the 6th of November, the year of our Lord, 2020. We're from Life in the Nation's capital. You're in the War Room, episode 481, now with over 17 million downloads. We're live on the John Frederick Radio Network on Real America's Voice dot news, or just Real America's Voice, I guess it is Old America's Voice, Real America's Voice, and Newsmax TV in seventy million homes. Real America's Voice is Dish Channel two nineteen and Comcast Channel one thirteen. I want to thank the lads out in Denver, the men and women out there that have helped me make this show possible. G News, GTV. Uh, and we, you can get us on the live stream. Make sure you get us uh, within this listening audience. Get us on the live stream at americasvoice.news. Is that what it is? americasvoice.news. The old name for the station. They got it, uh, or the channel. Doing fantastic work around a number of the America's uh, Voice, the real America's Voice folks, including uh, Ben is going to be with us uh, later to do a live report from uh, Maricopa County. He's been doing amazing work out there. We've got people all over. Uh, we've got a packed show today, second hour at 6 o'clock. We're going to have uh, Rich Barris on, and we're going to go through some details and some analysis of where we actually stand in this vote. Remember, a lot's happening. There, there are many moving pieces. If you're watching the mainstream media, all you're hearing is, you know, Trump's finished, Trump's done. Uh, you know, they're going to be calling Pennsylvania, they're calling this. T- take a deep breath. The cavalry has arrived. There are, um, you know, many serious lawyers working on this thing, some known, some unknown. Uh, there are huge legal packages being put together. There's tons of analytics going on. There is absolutely no doubt, no doubt, that something is very wrong with this election. Everybody knows it, right? They're going to be called out. Uh, the mainstream media that came out with the information warfare and all these polls and tried to do the voter suppression are not going to be able to steal this. So we need resolve. Just have resolve. We're going to figure this out. And we're going to use the rule of law to do it. We're going to use the courts. We're going to use the Constitution. And particularly the way the Constitution was uh, was structured and written, so everybody, uh, everybody, just take a deep breath, listen, and figure out what you got to do. Number one, what you got to do is pu- you got to push out nonstop. What you can do is push out nonstop uh, all the content you're seeing around the internet from all these great sites, from Revolver to our site. Uh, p- push out the uh, as we break down the show during the day on all the different uh, social media platforms. Just push, 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 build a community because that's what it's going to take. Um, and the show gets very looks. The reason I'm trying to shut us down is very, it, you know, I was talking the other day. It was a, it was a, it was, a, you know, speaking figuratively, not literally, as people know. We talked about St. Thomas More the day before, right, in his trial and execution. Uh, and that, you know, we talked about, and I've said from day one, I still believe this. President of the United States, second terms here, he should fire Ray and he should fire Fauci immediately. And I agree with Jack Maxey. Have him in the Oval. Have the nation's media there ask him 20 questions and fire him, right? And, and Fauci's going to be fired. And Ray's going to be fired. That, 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 that's coming. And show what transparent government really means. Radical transparency. That's what we want. Okay, we've got a packed show. I want to start. We're going to go to Georgia. We're going to Philadelphia. We're putting you in the war rooms that are there. We're taking you to the headquarters of places, whether it's Maricopa County, Atlanta, Georgia, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. I want to start with one of our production partners, the guy without whom we would never be able to launch this show. John Fredericks, he's got an announcement. What's happening right now is that Georgia, Pennsylvania is obviously the the big enchilada. That's thing people for some exciting news yeah. though. They just updated the numbers on Pennsylvania. The count that just got sent in, it's now tightened to fifteen thousand votes. Fifteen. And ladies and gentlemen, they do not have uh, many of the ballots that are probably going to be there. We know that they none of the provisional ballots. They're talking about this in the mainstream media after our show this morning. So there's more to come. Jack Keep Max, the faith, people. J- Jack Max, he's been forcing that one. He's been on that one like a dog on a bone for a couple of days. The provisional ballots. He's also about military ballots. Uh, Midge is going to have an update for all the nonsense going around the country a little later. Okay, I want to go to John Fredericks. John, you're shifting the flag, are you not? 
from your command post in Richmond, Virginia. You're going to you've got some breaking news. You're going to shift the command down to where? To Atlanta, Georgia. Uh, we're going to be there all next week with the John Fredericks Radio Network with AVN. We'll be on your show. Uh, we were started the, the week in Washington, went to uh, the heart of Virginia. Now we're going to be at the command center in Atlanta. Part of this, Steve, is to be able to shed light and transparency on what is going on, give a platform to the Trump lawyers, to the campaign down there, to all of the surrogates that we have, and to bring transparency uh, through our radio and video network. At the end of the day, Steve, as you know, you turn on the lights, the cockroaches shatter and they scatter. And that's exactly what is happening. The, what the situation right now is in Georgia, number one with these two runoffs, Atlanta and Georgia become the epicenter, the ground zero, Steve, of the republic as we know it. We lose those two seats. We lose the president. Uh, we're never going to have a country again. Everybody's got to realize how high the stakes are. In Georgia right now, uh, Biden has moved ahead by 1,500 votes, and the mainstream fake legacy media is jumping all over themselves to try to call it. There's nothing to call. 9,000, just in Gwinnett County alone, 9,000 ballots are outstanding from active military. Those have been breaking over 65% for Trump so far. All he's done for the military. Let's say it goes down and it's only 60%. That gives, uh, that gives Trump net 2,000. That puts him ahead by 500. Some of the data analysts I've talked to in Atlanta today are saying that they expect Trump now to win Georgia outright by 200 to 300 votes when it's said and done. Then there's going to be a recount. Secretary of State has already called for that. There's all kinds of fraud going on. A lot of these Biden ballots are going to be deemed in, ineligible and thrown out. They, Biden can only go backwards. Any of these recounts, Biden can only go backwards. He can't gain anything. That's going to happen in Georgia. There's other counties' pockets that are deep red that are going to come in uh, for President Trump. So they feel confident about a victory there. Now, let me tell you one thing that happened, and uh, Jenny Beth Martin can confirm this. In the biggest Fulton County Vote Gathering Center at the Farm Bureau at 11 p.m., they said, we're going to stop counting ballots. They, they told the media go home. They told the Republican uh, poll watchers and the Democrat poll watchers, everybody go home. We're done for the night. We're tired. We're going to go eat. We're going to be back tomorrow at 9 a.m. Everybody went, went out. They locked the door. They shut the blinds. And they continued to count ballots all night with no supervision, no Republicans there. That's illegal. That's going to be investigated. Steve, this... Hold on, hang on, the, hang, the, hang on, hang on. Slow down. Slow down. Slow down. It's incredible. Yeah. Hang on for a second. I want to go Sorry. back to that. The Farm Bureau, Fulton County. No, this is one of their biggest places. This was 11 was o'clock on Tuesday night. It was on... Stronghold. Yep. 11 p.m. Walk, Tuesday walk night. Our, uh, walk our audience through it slowly. Okay. 11 o'clock Tuesday night. They have Republican poll watchers there because this is a major Democratic Fulton County, downtown Atlanta stronghold. They've got poll watchers there, Republicans are there, lawyers are there watching the county of, of ballots. At 11 p.m., those in charge of the ballot counting at that facility told the media and they told Republican and Democrat poll watchers, right, because there's both sides. They said, hey, game over. We're, we're not counting any more ballots. People are tired. Let's go home. Come back tomorrow at 9 a.m. We'll open the doors. Everybody got escorted out. They locked the doors. They shut the blinds. They put on, I guess, a candle or a flashlight. I don't know what they did. And they continue to count ballots unsupervised throughout the night. And that's when Trump's lead, the next day you got up and started to erode. And there was no supervision there. Well, that's, that's illegal, Steve. They can't do that. That's going to be challenged, and uh, lawsuits are going to be flying, but our goal is to win the state outright anyway, and then go from there. Okay, and uh, you're reporting some news here. You're saying right now they're counting, uh, they're working through, and I take it this is the last group of ballots. It's 9,000 ballots. I guess that's from near Fort Benning, right? And these military ballots right now, President Trump's been basically two-thirds, one-third, roughly. All he needs to do is run 60%. And he would net out at a victory, an outright victory of two to three hundred, uh, three hundred votes. Exactly, exactly. About three hundred before before a recount. Got to be a recount. 
before, yeah, there's going to be a recount, but we're only going to gain in a recount, right? And these, all these ballots, the all, all Fulton County is done. Clayton County, which put um, Joe Biden over the top yesterday, Clayton County, 87 percent Democrat, 87 percent for Biden. That came in. All Fulton is in. Their biggest strongholds are done. Now what we have is active military ballots and other little pockets of rural areas that are trending, uh, that were voted for Trump on game day, some by 80, 85, 87 percent. So if things work out, if that math holds, uh, Trump wins Georgia outright by three, two, three, four hundred votes. And then you go into the recount, when will, which the Secretary of State yeah. has already mandated. Now, the Secretary of State has mandated that. When do you anticipate? You're going to be there Monday, well, your show, and, and you're going to camp out there until there's some resolution of this, correct? Absolutely, Steve. I'm camped out because you can't depend on, like, WSB or these, these fake news medias to cover this. I mean, you can't depend on CNN's their hometown. Can't depend on them. So we have to be there. You have to be there. We have to give transparency, and we have to report every day. I've got my uh, top reporter from the Virginia Star is going to be there. The Virginia Star, uh, thevirginiastar.com, just tune into that. We're going to be giving three updates a day, real live, talking to the real people, and uh, they're not going to be able to steal it. We're on to them. Look, and look we're, we're going to win uh, North Carolina. We're absolutely going to win Georgia. Right now, you're going to get an outright, at least, look, it's 300 votes, but we'll take anything right now, right? There's 300 votes with Trump up with all one votes vote, counted. One vote will be wins. shortly. It, it does it. One vote. One vote. You, you, you and, win and, 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 and North Carolina. I'm hearing good things out of Arizona. I want to tell everybody, uh, Richard Barris uh, from Big Data Polling will join us 6 o'clock for the entire hour to go all through this in detail. But Georgia is going to become the center of gravity. We've got to sort out that mess in Pennsylvania, and there are top lawyers. I think they're going to end up, I think we're, we've got a reporter up there, we've got Raheem Ghassan, but we're going to report immediately when they file in federal court this afternoon, this evening. But there's other bigger things working on than that. They've got real heavyweights, uh, lawyers, now working on this, and you're going to see some, some interesting stuff come out. The president's not backing down on this one iota. He, he, he knows this can't be stolen from the American people. Uh, John, one, one, one last thing. You've got a, a presidential that's absolutely essential. We've got to win Georgia, and we have to have a fair vote and a free vote. Talk to the audience about how important uh, these two Senate races are. They're going to be now, it looks like Purdue, is Purdue going to, with a 300-vote victory, or 300-vote at least ahead for Trump, with all votes counted, will Purdue break 50% uh, plus one vote? Well, the libertarian there is getting 2.8%. So uh, it's a 50-50 chance. Likely he's going to a runoff. And th then there'll be two runoffs uh, for, two, for the two seats on the same day. $750 million will be spent there. I'm going to be camped out there. And uh, it's going to be ground zero, basically. I mean, we're, we're trying to um, do what we, we, we can to cover this. But i got to just say this, Steve. Um, if it wasn't for you, and I'm telling you this from my heart, if it wasn't for you and what you're doing and your resolve and your steely uh, composure during this thing, uh, these feckless rhino Republicans running around the RNC, they had already given up. They're, they're, they're already going on the fake news CNN now, telling uh, the president to resign. It's over. You know, we got to be a gracious loser like Richard Nixon in 1960, like Romney. we got to be gracious losers so they can go back in the minority and have a fake and phony battle with Biden and then make deals w with China and their donors. You're the guy that has put a spine in everybody's back because, Steve, they can ban you, but you're not going away. Your message is out there. And I tell you what, I'm going to take your advice from today. I got a list and I'm writing them down. Chris Christie, Santorum. I go right down the list, man. I got it pinned up right in my office. Every time we get one of these feckless Republican spineless lo losers selling out the Republic so they can go back to business as usual, Wall Street, gangster banksters, Goldman Sachs, I'm writing them down, Steve. I'm writing everyone down. Ch John, we love you. Thank you for making this show possible. You're the guy's real America's voice. We'll talk to you over the weekend. Hopefully have you back on uh, in, on the weekend shows. John Fredericks of the John Fredericks Radio Network. He's the oracle of the deplorables. Midge, Jack, Bannon, all back in a minute.
Stephen K. Bannon. The epidemic is a demon, and we cannot let this demon hide. War Room. Pandemic. Here's your host, Stephen K. Bannon. Welcome back to War Room. We're going to go uh, to different locations throughout the day. We're talking to John Fredericks, who's moving down, shifting everything down to Georgia, Atlanta. We're going to get Jenny Beth Martin on later. She's in the War Room down there. A lot breaking. Uh, John Fredericks tells us that at the end of the day today, Trump's in the very first round. They're going to close that. Trump's going to be up 300 votes, um, and they're going to obviously do a recount that's going to start, and you're going to have two. Uh, Purdue's not going to make it because of the Libertarian, the 2.8% the Libertarian's taken. He's going to get in a runoff. Obviously, the other uh, race that had a three-way with Collins is going to get into a runoff. So Georgia is going to become the center of the known uh, political universe between now in January, and like $9 billion will be spent on those two Senate seats. Uh, but it's very important. Uh, that is the kind of anchor. We get that recount. Johns makes a very uh, smart comment that it's only going to peel off Biden of votes as we go. Um, before we get to Raheem in Philadelphia, anything we got here on any anything anything gnarly, Jack? Uh, Midge? Yeah, we got some breaking news okay. here. Uh, Michigan Representative, uh, or Republican, excuse me, Michigan Republican U.S. Senate candidate John James uh, refused to concede his race against incumbent Senator Gary Peters, Democrat. Uh, his quote, Michiganers may have been disenfranchised. And, you know, Michigan is a great point with him because they were talking about this spread between down vote uh, people who voted just for Biden and maybe didn't vote for the Democratic candidate. And between James and Trump, there is a less than 10,000 spread. But between Biden and uh, I can't even remember what the candidate who stole the election's name is. Please, you can throw Gary it out. Peters. But there's about a, over a 90,000 vote spread. So this is one of the things that have people questioning. Why does it seem that there's this lack of down vote, down ballot voting for the Senate candidate in these places where all of these ballots seem to be appearing out of nowhere, Michigan. Where they just marked Biden. Exactly. Yeah. Makes you think it's faster just to fill in one. Okay, let's go to let's go to Raheem Kassam. Raheem is in Philadelphia uh, outside of headquarters. Uh, Raheem, what is going on with the Trump campaign in Philadelphia right now? You've been there for the last couple of days. Yeah, some really interesting developments here tonight, Steve. Um, this afternoon, uh, we had a, uh, a Trump campaign or campaign affiliated lawyer uh, obtaining a court order, which effectively means that thousands of provisional ballots will now be set aside um, for review, uh, basically being challenged. This basically came after the lawyers uh, suspected that Democrats were informing their voters that they had cast the ballot incorrectly in some way, whether it was that they weighed them and they weren't heavy enough, they could tell they weren't in a security envelope or any other thing that may have been wrong with them. Uh, Trump lawyers sort of went and said, OK, look, there are all these provisional ballots now. Let's figure out why they exist. And effectively, they exist because the Democrats were going to their own side and saying, hey, there's something wrong with your ballot. You've got to go in person now and file a provisional ballot to sort that out, effectively curing the ballot. Uh, that's, that's the technical term that they use. Now, that obviously flies in the face of, oh, my God, don't vote in person because, you know, this coronavirus, because they have to go in person uh, to cure the ballot. And let me give you a statistic here about this. I just got off the phone with these lawyers, and they told me that uh, of 6,000 in Montgomery County alone, the lawyers have reviewed 731, 80% of which have now been formally challenged. Now, what that means is they basically get set aside and according to Pennsylvania law, they get reviewed within seven days. Now, a lot of them were basically set aside as of this morning. So you've got effectively six days for these to be. And I've got a picture up on my Twitter feed of the actual court order itself signed by Judge Kevin uh, Brobson uh, of the uh, of the Commonwealth Court of, of Pennsylvania. So it's really interesting development given that this is quite a large scale, given how close Pennsylvania is. I understand. John Fredericks told us we haven't looked at. The, I haven't looked at the numbers since the show started. He says actually Trump cut into uh, Biden's uh, lead here just to, with the last batch that was put up. Is that correct? 
Well, I have heard that, but I, 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 I'm not sure how, just how verified that is. Every, every sort of few moments you're getting, there's a lot of information out there at the moment. And here's one of the interesting things uh, from the conversations that I've had with people this morning is that uh, both campaigns are, are working off the data as it's been published so far, but the data that's been published so far uh, is, is already outdated. Uh, for instance, I've uh, had a great team of, of, of statistical analysts who just answered a call that we put out this morning on, on the show, and I did on Twitter, and other people I've been doing as well. And they came together and they started going through this data and going, hold on a minute. What we're seeing is uh, statistically ridiculous turnout in places like Allegheny County. Now, anybody who knows Pennsylvania politics will know Allegheny County has been one of the hearts of Democrat corruption for years. It's been a real thorn in the side uh, of Republicans in the state. And you're seeing turnout rates in the 90% range in those areas. What's really interesting as well to me is, and again, this data is now outdated, and they haven't released any fresh data for the campaigns to work off right now, but the turnout in, in Philadelphia itself looks a little lower than, than people expected. So the suspicion is that, when the, that somewhere along the lines, the Democrats have decided, hey, Republicans are going to focus on Philadelphia itself and, and throw all their resources into Philadelphia itself. As, uh, as a place where fraud might be occurring. So it's being spread out around. You're looking at Allegheny County and you're looking at Montgomery County. I've actually just put up on, on my Twitter page as well. Uh, it's one of the last Twitter pages that we've got for the war room. Um, I've put up a, a statistical chart that we, we, that we have created ourselves off the back of this data. So people can go for themselves and look at uh, where, where the high turnouts are occurring. And that's where I suspect uh, the Republican lawyers will be deploying and where they'll be looking uh, uh, for, for discrepancies. There are clearly discrepancies, if you trust the data that's coming out of this thing. Now it will be about, okay, what can we freeze? What can we review? What can we challenge? So we've got a lot. I've got to tell the audience, there is a long, old way to go yet. You, you cannot be calling Pennsylvania with this many challenges to this many provisional ballots. There, there's, there's some legal news out today regarding me, and, so, and, and you're going to hear other legal news coming about other lawyers very heavyweight lawyers who they're going to going to work on certain topics. There's sophisticated what you did today. We're going to have Dave Ramaswamy on here. They're very sophisticated data people. The Democrats have to know we're onto them. Okay, the 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 evidence and the data shows there's something not right here. Right, this was this is this is all fraudulent, and we're going to get to the bottom of it. And I can tell you, like in Montgomery County, you're seeing you're seeing turnouts that are beyond historical. Right, just just blow out numbers. There's something fishy here. And there's plenty of time. This is why the found. This is why Jan January sixth, excuse me, December sixth is when it's got to be done. December eighth is the safe harbor. They gave you essentially a month to figure these things out, right? And they're going to be figured out. There's going to be a, a runoff. Uh, there's going to be a um, a recount in Georgia, and they're going to go through and do another canvassing. So they're going to get there and start throwing stuff out. And the Democrats just going to have to know. They're just going to have to embrace the suck. People, the cavalry has arrived. And they're going to drill down deep in this. And people are not going to let this get stolen. It's just not going to happen. You have too many smart lawyers now on this team. You've got too many smart uh, data analysts on this team going through precinct by precinct exactly what's going on. Raheem, what, what's, the, what's the mood there? And, and is there going to be, uh, I know Rudy and people I think are working on something. They were looking to try to file in federal court this afternoon or this evening. And by the way, these for audience, yeah. the judges work nonstop here. You can file in the middle of the night if you get something. So is there going to be a, a new suit filed today? And, uh, and what is the attitude? What's the fighting spirit like in Philadelphia? Well, as I understood it, there was going to be a, a, a series of suits filed. Uh, judge hearing one uh, supposedly this afternoon. It was supposed to be at 5 o'clock. We're not sure whether that's taken place on time yet. Uh, but the lawyers have been busily working away on putting together witness statements and testimonies. There are masses and masses of, uh, of complaints uh, that the Trump team has, has put together from ordinary people who experienced problems on voting day in polling stations, whether it was that they weren't allowed in on time, whether they felt like somebody was gone Guiding somebody on how to vote. There's just there's just reams and reams of evidence here, and the idea is to take the evidence to the judge and say, look, 
uh, you can't declare this. You can't, you know, these can't be verified. These ballots, should, you know, the vote cannot be counted uh, unless we rectify all these issues and figure out whether or not there was a major fraud going on here. From my perspective, from my personal perspective, I've looked at things like this before. You know, we were at the cutting edge of the ballot fraud that was taking place in East London uh, just a couple of years ago that ended up with a uh, major mayor for the Labour Party or formerly of the Labour Party being removed from office as a result. What I'm seeing here in Pennsylvania is five, six, seven times the scale of that level of fraud. Uh, that's the only thing that makes sense in this regard. And I'll give you another example uh, as to why I make that claim. And I know it's a big claim and, 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 and all these claims will be backed up and, and are being backed up in real time. I tried to post something online as soon as I get it. We were going through the, um, we were going through the open data for Pennsylvania and we were looking specifically at birth dates uh, registered on mail-in ballots. Now, of course, there are a lot of them that say, you know, 1-1-1800. That's just a default thing that the computer puts on. So we're not looking, we can discount that, right? But then you go down the list here and you start getting, again, in Allegheny County, Democrat, uh, six, uh, the 18th of June, 1890, born. Uh, Allegheny County, Democrat, the 13th of March, 1894. Uh, Philadelphia, 17th of no November, 1894. And the list goes on and on. So these are not defaults that the computer is defaulting to. It's not like there's, you know, the Y2K kind of thing. These are actually input birth dates that we're finding on these mail-in ballot uh, uh, things that are being uploaded now in real time uh, to, the, uh, to the open data website for Pennsylvania. So this, there is so much to go through here. And I suspect over the course of the weekend, you're going to see many more lawyers uh, from the Trump side flooding into Pennsylvania as a result of finding all of this out. Okay, Raheem, I want you to hang there. We're going to take a break. We're going to come back to you in the second hour. We know you got other breaking news we want to get to. Raheem Kassam, our co-host here on War Room Pandemic, he is on the scene at headquarters, Trump headquarters in Philadelphia. Uh, we're going to return uh, to Raheem in the second hour. We've got Richard Barris coming in. Uh, we're going to go to, we're going to next go to Maricopa County, to Arizona, Georgia, to Pennsylvania, to Arizona. Ben Burkwam has got another live report there. We're going to talk to Ben. It's Fog City Midge, Jack Maxey, Stephen K. Bannon. We're in the war room going throughout the nation. Next.
is a demon, and we cannot let this demon hide. War Room. Pandemic. Here's your host, Stephen K. Bannon. This fight for the presidency, the fight for the country, the fight for the republic, the fight for populism, nationalism, the fight for the free world, has many fronts. Georgia, Pennsylvania, Arizona, Nevada, Michigan, Wisconsin. We're going to spread throughout the nation and go around today and talk. Right now, we want to make sure everybody understands we're in a DDoS attack, um, America's Voice.News, the great service of Real America's Voice, the great thing of Rob Sig and Howard Diamond put this incredible news organization together with John Solomon and others that we're so honored to be a part of. Now under DDoS attack, denial of service. That's, that's, when, that's when the Chinese Communist Party and the Russians and the heavies and the source back guys, that's when they come for you. That's when they don't want any of the information out. Here, note to them, it's getting out. We're not backing down. Like John Furrick said, we've got, we've got steeled resolve here. We are not backing down an inch on this thing. I can tell you the Wu Mao army in uh, support of Chairman Z and the CCP have been harassing us on uh, Twitter feed that are left up amongst us. And they're claiming that we are worse than China, that we have no right to talk about China as Americans because they're watching it happen to us right now and that we're hypocrites. Thank you very much, Mr. Dorsey, the, the, Mr. Zuckerberg. That's okay. The Wu Mao 50 Cent Army. We'll fight through that. We'll fight through Dorsey and these guys. We'll fight through the Wu Mao 50 Cent Army. You got something, Mitch? You got breaking news on James O'Keefe? James O'Keefe, uh, one of the USPS officials in Pennsylvania, has agreed to go on the that's, record. That's Postal Service? Yes, the United States Postal Service yeah. is going to go on record and testify under oath to backdating ballots. Backdating ballots. That's James O'Keefe. He's a killer. Project Veritas. Okay, we're going to go around. We're going to go to Maricopa County. Ben Burkwam who is a reporter with Real America's Voice, has done an amazing job. Uh, ben, uh, can you hear us out there in Maricopa County? I got you, Steve. Thank you, sir. Wow, it's another big, it's another big, get. tell us what's going on. It looks like another big gathering. It looks another part of the Great Awakening is live outside of, uh, outside of the election center in Maricopa. What is going on? It's actually uh, it's quieted down quite a bit. Earlier today, there were hundreds, if not a, over a thousand people out here. It was out into the streets. In fact, the, the police had to block off the streets uh, and shut down traffic because the, the, it was so large. And at one point, uh, it almost it, it got a little bit out of control because Penske's trucks started driving in and, and bringing in large metal containers into the building and uh, you know the, the the people that were here watching started freaking out some of them saying what are in those containers what are in those containers so far we haven't got to uh, find out what it was uh, i've been told by election officials that as the ballots are counted they put them on pallets and then they ship those off to a secure vault somewhere uh, and that those may be what were in the trucks but as of yet even reporters weren't allowed to get into the trucks or to see into the trucks to see what was going in those uh, that caused a bit of a ruckus we we had uh, Charlie Kirk out here, uh, the president's attorneys as well came out and spoke and reassured the Arizona residents that Arizona can still be won, that they are looking into every fraudulent vote, that they are also looking into every vote that hasn't been counted. And that's what I'm hearing over and over and over out here. Trump supporters, I had a, a mother with her daughter, her daughter's first time voting, came up, said her mother, they, they went to vote together and her mom's vote was counted, but hers wasn't. And they're just trying to find out why. The answer that they're getting from the county election officials is that they'll find out 10 days after the final results are announced uh, and that's just not good enough i mean it's just it's just uh, it's insane and we have hundreds of people now that are saying their votes have not been counted they've gone online to find out and it's either listed as rejected or uh, not counted and so that's the question why are so many trump supporters votes not being counted and i haven't heard of any democrats saying that they've had the same problem so again there's just issue after issue after issue uh, ben, let's go. We have a package for the guys in Denver. We have uh, Vish. We have Charlie. The Charlie Kirk package. Let's, let's play. Let's play the Charlie Kirk pa package. Every single legal vote must count. We must audit the voter rolls. This is a fraud on the American people. How is it that President Donald Trump? expanded his voter registration records in these states and all of a sudden you're trying to tell me that they got 90 percent turnout in some of these urban areas hold on a second joe biden had higher turnout than barack obama in milwaukee joe biden who 
couldn't get 100 people to show up. Joe Biden, that had no ground operation. Here's really what probably happened. These, these ballots got sent out to every human being imaginable. And the Chicago political machine got sent out to the core cities that were going to determine it. We are not going to stand for this, everybody. And you got the fighters out there now. You got the Dave Bosses. You got the Charlie Kirks. You got the Boris Epstein's. You've got uh, you've got Corey Lewandowski. You got Pam Bondi. The cavalry has arrived. For everybody in the audience, just understand the first team is now fully deployed. You got the fighters out there. Uh, ben, what is what's the attitude of the folks out there? Charlie Kirk laid out everything. You know, you got guys who couldn't draw a crowd, didn't have a ground game, and yet they're getting ninety percent. But you're getting higher vote percentages than when the beloved Barack Obama ran, right? And Joe Biden's putting guys to sleep. Uh, did his right. did what Charlie Kirk That's say? Right. Did it resonate with that audience? Yeah, absolutely. And I've actually got a few of the locals over here. One from Houston flew in, my friend from Houston, uh, and then a couple locals here. I, I just want to ask you guys, does what Charlie Kirk said earlier that this is not over, that how, how is it possible that Joe Biden got these many, this many votes, uh, more votes than Barack Obama at, when President Trump's registration was so high? And to you, to the folks here in Arizona and to Texas and all across the country, how far should President Trump take this? He should take it all the way. I mean, go all the way with it. He's ex trying to expose everything, expose the Democrats for what they are, for fraud, fraudulent crooks, criminals. Take it all the way. We're behind him 100 percent. And how far are you willing to go? All the way. 100 percent behind him. I should be in bed right now. I'm so tired, but I'm here. You as well. <laughs> That's what we love about Trump. He doesn't give up on us, and no. he will fight till the end. So you, we're gonna you, we're gonna stand with him. Do you trust the election results so far that you've heard? Absolutely not. No. Not at all. That's why. That's, that's why no. we're here right now. Yeah. yeah. We were actually just talking about the one where he, a Biden, supposedly got more votes than Obama or any other president. There is no way. Yeah. There's no way. All the enthusiasm behind Trump, all the rallies, our 96-mile uh, train that we had here, and all the rallies that have 20, 30,000 people. There's no way. Yeah. No way. Insane. Trisha. Well, this is even bigger than President Trump, and I love President Trump, and I want him to win. But this is about a secure election, and we don't have one. And we, we have to we have to do something about that. This is not okay. We have to fight, and we have to take it to the Supreme Court. Yeah. And that's what I'm hearing, Steve, over and over and over, is fight till the end, no matter what it takes. We are done as Americans sitting back and watching the left, the radical left, that want to turn this country into a socialist, communist, uh, so-called utopia, really total destruction of this nation. They're done with allowing that to happen. Happen, uh, and they're willing to take it as far as it needs to go. Ben uh, Burkwam out in Maricopa. Thank you, Ben. We may try to come back with you later in the later in the show before we get off in the next hour. Ben Burkwam, Real America's Voice, a field reporter from Maricopa County. Thank you, sir. Uh, I think the most important takeaway there: you get fighters like Charlie Kirk, but the woman at the end that said, "This is bigger than Trump." You know, I'm a Trump supporter. This is bigger than Trump. This is about the country, and this is about us having a free and fair election. Ladies and gentlemen, this is why we're never going to stop. This is why we're not going to back down. This is why all the voices telling him, oh, just, you know, be gracious. It's not about gracious. We're going to be gracious as we grind through this in very tough times to ultimate victory, right? Because Trump already won. We're going to be gracious, right? Uh, because we're winners. We've won this. You won this on the third. All we're going to do is close on the victory. But you cannot back down. If it, This is not about people are telling Trump to be gracious and just go ahead and concede now are not thinking about the country. They're not, they're, they're, they're trying to go the easy path, right? What do they say that the, uh, it's a narrow gate into heaven, right? Yes. Is, it, is, it, is, it, is, it, is it a tough path? The path is a narrow, a narrow gate. Yeah, there is no middle path, as they say. <laughs> it's a narrow gate, right? Tough path. That's what we're on. We're on. We're, we're going to go through that narrow gate, and you know, it's, but it's going to be tough. What's so powerful is that working class and middle class people in the middle of the desert get it. Where the elites in, in, in New York and Washington, D.C. Here's what the elites in Washington, D.C. All they want to do right now is have Trump come out and, and have some phony you know, uh, con concession and say, I'm going to bring the country together. That's not going to bring the country together. The Trump movement's not coming together on this, right? They're not going to come together. They're not going to accept it and say, even if Trump says it. That's what they understand. They, they want to make sure, and they want, they're going to have to have a process. 
in Philadelphia with top lawyers to go through this. They're going to want to see the James O'Keefe videos, right? Uh, Midge, I don't know if it, what, what's happening in Michigan. They got this software package that the, the head of the Republican Party, I think Ronna was out there with her too, they're making an announcement of some software package that inadvertently flipped 5,000 uh, Trump, vo- uh, Trump votes to Biden votes. Yep. What's going on there? Yeah, the Michigan GOP uh, is saying that 6,000 votes in one county were switched by a software glitch from Trump to Biden. And this same software was used in 47 other counties. Uh, I'm actually looking into that company myself right now. It looks like this software is, is used in other places as well. Boy, Something to I, look into. Boy, I, wouldn't, I wonder if it's used in, and just I'm going to throw some random states out. Arizona, Nevada, Georgia, Pennsylvania. We don't know. We're going to find out. Remember, there's no conspiracy, but there are also no coincidences, right? No coincidences. So how do you get – I love how the software package – I love how all the problems are always – they flip to Biden. Poor Trump and the Trump movement never gets – they never get a flip. Can't you – by the way, if you're going to steal it, like the guy in the beard out Maricopa said yesterday, don't, don't insult my intelligence. Right? Don't have the 138,000 show up with nothing. Don't at least give me a little something for the effort. Right? You know, when you do the flip, just get, you know, take 5,000 for yourself, just give me 1,000. Right? Don't do the whole flip. Listen, one of the things that we know is this Trump movement gathered tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of Hispanic and black men in these urban areas. Big time. And let me tell you what, brothers, you guys should stand up for your vote because. They stole it from you, too. Look at our, our Senator James, who I believe will be seated. But look what they did to him. This guy is an exemplar of everything that we would want in an American character. And they stole the election from him. So, um, the, um, do we have, is Dave Ramaswamy dropped? Okay, oh okay, fine. The, um, no breaks. Okay, no breaks? No break until the top. top okay, break. fantastic. I love that. Yeah. This is the this is real this is re, this is real deal. that DDoS attack actually got some benefits to the programming right started kind of to get with yeah. miles going the thing, um, this is what's so powerful you're absolutely correct right and now but here's the thing, we owe them for those individuals the Hispanics the Latinos the African Americans that came and voted for Trump and maybe voted for Republican the first time we have an obligation to them, we just can't roll over. They gave their vote. They went out of the way. They're, they're probably getting huge grief. In their Look at Cube. Cube's getting lit up. It right? takes a lot more courage for them to go out and vote and for them to support the president than it takes for some guy uh, out in Gross Point. So I it have a lot courage. of support. It, it takes, takes courage, courage. It takes courage. Of their conviction. It takes courage for Gross Point, too. But my point is these guys, it takes it's super courage. <laughs> yeah. And we owe it. We have an obligation to the new voters that came into this system and dev- in this time, in this cycle, and voted for Trump, we have an, an obligation to do that. Okay, so we got we got like a bon- we got some bonus time. We're going to have a fit for everybody. And can we bring in Dave Ramaswamy? We're going to go. You got something, Mitch? Just jump in here, Mitch. Don't be shy. You can't be okay. shy. You can't be shy around this mic. Okay. Um, I don't want to be conspiratorial, but I have a fact for you. Okay. The same company that created the software that had a glitch. Okay. Also, uh, they, it's a large voting operation. It's called Dominion Voting. Yep. And they've got, uh, you know, you look at their map here. This is all the states that they're in. They're in, I yep. think, 29 states in Puerto Rico. Georgia. Including Nevada, yeah. Georgia, Illinois, Michigan, hmm. Pennsylvania, uh, Arizona. So it, it just kind of makes you wonder, was this same software being used? And I'd like people to well, do l- an l- investigation. We're going to start crowdsourcing this right you know, now. Vish yeah. and I were talking about this on the way back from the earlier show. And you see this electronic age that we're in, right? And the First Amendment was meant to protect human speech and printed speech. And to tell you the truth, with this electronic age, their ability to suppress that information is even greater because we don't have the printed paper anymore, right? We don't have the soapbox in the town square anymore. Those are now Twitter and Facebook. Yeah. And it's kind of a frightening prospect, really. I honestly feel like I'm I'm living in Orwell's 1984 because I can't tell you how many times I've posted articles that later have had the headlines changed and rewritten. So you go back several months and they've changed the headline. Well, several people from our, our crew in Poland, one particularly, was lamenting today to me on Twitter that this is starting to feel like Poland in the 1980s. And this is what they, they wanted to get free of. And they're all kind of heartbroken to think that this is happening to the United States.
Oh yeah, no. This is uh, this is this is the way this is the way it goes. This is why these oligarchs in Silicon Valley, right? You got to break this stuff up. You got to turn it into a public utility. Cannot wait to turn Twitter into a public utility, right? Get it down to like a ten percent return. Get that data that's all into a central a central location. Okay, um, we got a little change up now. We're not taking commercial breaks. That's fantastic. We're on a DDoS attack. Right, they're trying to shut down that this is the Wu Mao fifty cent army or others. This is their thing when when you get too out of control and they can't shut you down every other way, they do a DDoS attack. A DDoS attack is trying to shut down your website. You were talking about the middle way earlier and earlier today and yesterday you spoke about the contentious election between Adams and Jefferson. So if you want to know what a founding father thinks about the middle way, John Adams wrote to Horatio Gates in seventeen seventy six, I agree with you in politics. The middle way is none at all, people. So if you need to be inspired, look back to our founders. These were guys with pluck. These were guys who put it all on the line. The guys just like Donald Trump in some ways. Gates was the uh, hero of Saratoga, right? Yes. Won the battle. He and Benedict Arnold won the b- battle of Saratoga. Okay, let's go to Dave Ramaswamy. We got Dave on. We're, we're packed today. We're going to Richard Barris the next hour. We got Lance Wall, Wall now talking about the populist movement and the evangelicals. We got t- going to go back to Raheem, hopefully back to Maricopa. Dave Ramaswamy uh, joins us. Uh, Dave, I, I want to walk through this statistical. A lot of this is going to come down to probability assessment, statistical analysis of exactly what happened here, of how do people go to bed at 11 o'clock midnight. Donald Trump's winning a sweeping mandate, a landslide victory, won Ohio by seven, winning Florida by three and a half, 47 percent of the Hispanic vote, big uh, upticks in in African-American vote, African-American males supporting him, every demographic coming across, right? The one thing we know now is that I I think uh, uh, actually the white vote was a smaller percentage they thought for Trump. So you get this overwhelming support. He's up in Wisconsin. He's up in Michigan. He's up in Pennsylvania by 800,000 votes. Up in Arizona, North Carolina, Georgia. It's a sweeping, a central landslide. People see the 11 o'clock news and they go to bed. They wake up in the morning, even early, get up at 6 o'clock, get that cup of coffee, and Donald Trump's behind everywhere. Right or virtually everywhere in the process of getting out, and people go, "Well, hold it! I thought that they were going to stop overnight, and we're going to resume in the morning." What happened? So walk us through, Dave. You're, you're you're one of the smartest guys I've ever met. Walk us through the statistical framework here, and 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 help people understand. Walk through this theory that's out there, and 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 help people understand what's going on. You know, democracy dies in darkness, especially between two a.m. and six a.m. <laughs> yes, the Washington Post uh, tells us, right? Uh, so, Steve, the statistical contention is this, and I will make a couple of uh, prefacing remarks, which is extraordinary claims require extraordinary evidence. And in life, there are no certainties, but only probabilities. So... Uh, In statistics, I mean, everybody knows, most people know there's the normal distribution or bell curve, which applies to, uh, for example, people's heights and, for example, uh, test scores like SAT, ACT. You know, that's like a bell curve or a normal distribution, which the scores follow. But in uh, naturally occurring number data sets, there's something called a Benford distribution, B-E-N-F-O-R-D. So Benford's law states that in naturally occurring numbers uh, or data sets, the number one appears as the leading significant digit about 30% of the time, while the number nine appears as the leading significant digit less than 5% of the time. So, but if the digits were distributed uniformly, they would each occur only about 11% of the time. So it's kind of counterintuitive. And that's why it's also called the law of anomalous numbers. And this applies to a wide variety of data sets, including street addresses, electricity bills, and stock prices. So it also makes predictions about the distribution of second digits, third digits, and, uh, you know, the digit combinations. So the intuition is this, in uh, electronic voting totals, which are legitimate, the, the numerical vote per county or ward will follow a Benford law distribution. 
But in cases where they're artificially constructed, they will not follow the Benford law. Yeah, here's a nice graphic. Okay, so, so, for example, yeah, go ahead. Yep. No, listen, we're impressed for time. I, I get, I kind of get the theory, and people get it. Cut to the chase of how the, what does this got to do with voting on, on, on uh, what does this got to do with the problem we're facing, that we're every second, a second of urgency? I understand the theory of Benford's law and Benford's distribution. What, how's that, why does that have any meaning, any, any relevance to the, to, the, to the voting patterns that we're seeing or to the situation we're in? No, the relevance it has is just like DNA evidence uh, is used in, in crime cases to either, uh, you know, turn around or, or reverse a conviction of someone fraudulently accused. This can be used as mathematical DNA evidence for any of the legal cases being filed. So if there's any discrepancy in any state level or, or city level, Benford law can help expose, I mean, it serves as a mathematical DNA evidence. And what do we see here? What is mathematical DNA, okay, because it's got to be, it should be by this theory one way, and it's, it's obviously going to be different. What is the mathematical DNA evidence that you see so far or these data analysts are searching for in places like Pennsylvania? They're doing it up at the headquarters in Philadelphia. We know they're doing it uh, in Washington at campaign headquarters. What, what, is, what is the mathematical DNA evidence they're looking for? You know, I, I would echo the lady you had on earlier who rightly said this election is bigger than the president. It's, it's about American democracy. It's, it's in the spirit of all the soldiers who fight and died for our country who had the American flag patch on, not a, like a party patch on. So even in this election, you've had multiple candidates who ran. Of course, Trump and Biden are the most well-known. So if you look at uh, distributions of votes in, say, Miami-Dade versus Chicago or Milwaukee, there's some troubling patterns where, you know, some candidates, uh, you know, their vote totals conform to Benford's law, and the, uh, for other candidates, it doesn't. So this, this is worth looking into. Okay, but what is that? Okay, I got it's worth looking into, but what, what is, how is that going to specifically apply to, to, let's just take Pennsylvania. What, what are people going to be looking for? No, in Pennsylvania or Philadelphia, people have to look for, the, you know, the voting patterns in Philadelphia versus the voting patterns or, or vote totals in rural counties in Pennsylvania or, or voting patterns in Cleveland or, and, and voting patterns in rural counties of Ohio. You know, Ohio borders uh, Pennsylvania so there shouldn't be large discrepancies between neighboring states. Same with Ohio and Michigan. Say, uh, so difference in voting in, say, in Cleveland, Ohio, versus Detroit, Michigan. Okay, fantastic. Uh, uh, Dave, we've got to jump. We've got so many guests backed up. But I want to have you on over the weekend where we can take some more time. I do know, and I want to tell the audience, one of the things we try to do, whether it's pandemic, whether it was impeachment, but here in this in this, uh, in this this fight, we try to get you in intellectual constructs or concepts, explain them, and then we walk through process. So, you know, you know, you know uh, strategy and structure or... Um, uh, our, uh, in, in, in architecture, college architecture, they teach you statics and dynamics. You need to know the statics. You need to know the structural elements of something. You need to know the dynamics. If you understand statics and dynamics, you start to get a mental map of how things work, of how the world works. This Benford's uh, law, Benford's di distribution, is going to be a very important thing in going forward as they start to make the case for for what happened here. Dave Ramaswamy, how do people get, what's your Twitter feed? How do people get access to you? We're going to have you back over the weekend to go in more depth in this and specifically how it applies to the current situation we're in. No, but uh, Steve, my Twitter, my uh, parlor ID is Dave Ramaswamy. And let me make a final point. You know, uh, discovery of water below the surface of Mars is a low probability event, but it's possible. But imagine someone claims they discovered Coca-Cola be below the surface of Mars. Now, that's an extraordinary claim, and it requires extraordinary evidence. Fantastic. Okay, brother. Thank you very much. Dave Ramaswamy. Uh, we're going to get to – I think we're going to take a, actually take a break. I'm looking at my team. Okay, we're back to taking breaks 
We're going to take a short break. We're going to be back with Lance Walnut. We're also going to have the one, the only, big data polling, Richard Barris, to join us. The virus has now killed more than 100 people in China, and new cases have been confirmed around the world. So you don't want to frighten the American public. France and South Korea have also got evacuation plans. Which you need to prepare for and assume. Strongly warning Americans to avoid all non-essential travel to China. That this is going to be a real serious problem. France, Australia, Canada, the US, Singapore, Cambodia, Vietnam, the list goes on. Health officials are investigating more than 100 possible cases in the US. In Germany, a man has uh, contracted the virus. The epidemic is a demon, and we cannot let this demon hide. Japan, where a bus driver uh, contracted the virus. Coronavirus has killed more than 100 people there and infected more than 4,500. We have to prepare for the worst, always, because if you don't and the worst happens. War Room Pandemic. Here's your host, Stephen K. Bannon. Welcome back to War Room Pandemic. We're live on the John Fredericks Radio Network on Real America's Voice, now Dish Channel 219. On Comcast, it's Channel 113. I want to thank the uh, folks out in Denver for helping produce this show. They're now under also DDoS attack, the Wu Mao 50 Cent Army, and other bad actors throughout the world trying to shut, desperately trying to shut this show down. Not going to happen. Also, Newsmax TV, Chris Ruddy and the team down in Palm Beach. I'm here with uh, Maggie Vanderberg, that is Fog City Midge, and Jack Maxey, my co host. Raheem Kassam is in uh, at, at uh, Trump headquarters in Philadelphia. Brother uh, Bergwam. Uh, from Real America's Voice is out of Maricopa County. We've got John Fredericks that's en route to Georgia. We have Jenny Beth Martin down at the War Room headquarters uh, for the Trump campaign in Atlanta. We're going to go to her later. Uh, we're also going to get Richard Barris on here to go through big data, polling all the analysis of where we stand exactly. We're going to talk about the federal lawsuit that's going in. This is a war room. This is wartime. It's time to man up. We're not backing off this. Get focus. We're going to figure out the legal strategy. We're going to figure out the analytics. We're going to figure out where these votes are. And we're not going to allow this thing to be stolen from the American people. I want to bring in now Lance Awalnow. Lance, uh, talk to me about the evangelicals and talk to me about populism and talk to me about where people are right now. I know people are worried, some people are concerned, but we had a woman interviewed, a deplorable interviewed by Ben Bergwam of Real America's Voice a few minutes ago out in Maricopa County, and she said, look, this is bigger than Trump. This is actually bigger than the Trump movement. This is bigger than the Republican Party. This is about the nation, and this is about the ability to have a free and fair election. If we don't do that, we're a banana republic. What say you, yep. sir? 
The United States is bigger than that. It's about communist China and the Davos crowd and the global reset, and there's nobody more pregnant with apocalyptic anxiety than evangelicals. We are the people that gave you the sci-fi uh, end time series. So these people, this army of, I'd say, 30 to 35 million law-abiding, faith-filled folks voted for Donald Trump, 81% of them. It's an unprecedented degree of unity in a, in a company which is normally divided 50-50 between Democrats and Republicans. And that's a large part of the surge of people watching what you're doing, Steve, because uh, our folks are uh, just now awakening to the fact that it's not just enough to vote and it's not actually enough to pray. You have to not only pray, you not, you not only have to vote, but you actually have to strategically show up and like I've got, because of you, we put like two or 3,000 people in polling centers. And I'm getting the reports right here from them, and they're shocking. Uh, we had one, uh, one uh, Detroit Cabo Arena person there who says this represents 503 precincts, 930 poll workers. And this guy's texting me in the toilet because he had to sneak the report out to me. The original pay was 250 per day, but I'm told that Zuckerberg helped fund uh, the 600 a day, and they're all 99% trained Democrats. The ratio is 10 to 1, higher poll workers, virtually all Democrats. The system is easily rigged. I'm hearing about the electronic tabulation machine, the Dominion uh, manufacturing machines. They've all been malfunctioning here, and the only IT specialist is a partisan Democrat. Isn't that convenient? <laughs> So I'm here as a poll challenger in uh, this arena. But uh, what's, uh, people are almost all carrying, uh, they're not supposed to actually have any insignia or wear any attire to indicate political affiliation, but the ACLU union organizers and Black Lives Matters are all wearing insignia on their shirts. So this is the kind, this is, and then of course it goes on to say that uh, the shift is changing, but fresh activists and workers are coming in and they're seeking to tabulate a whole bunch of new ballots because boxes are still waiting to come in. L Can you imagine this? I'm going to apply this to yeah. the other states. Lance, uh, I've got Richard Barris. I got to bring in. What I'd like to do, if you're available, I want to come back to you in like two segments because I got to ask you not just about this, but I also want to ask you. You brought up the Great Reset. And I think we need to frame this for the audience. Can we come back to you? I got to get to Barris. Make sure we get all the analytics out. And I want to come back. Oh, to yeah, you. I want to hear the analytics. Too. That... Let's go. Okay, I'll fine. You hang, Lance. Okay, perfect. Lance Wall now, and uh, he's talking about the party of Davos crowd in the Great Reset. And now I want to bring in the rocket scientist and uh, a guy that really took a star turn on uh, on two, our Tuesday night coverage for eight hours. I got so many compliments throughout the world. Uh, we had eight hours of pure analytics, legal structure. No happy talk, just the facts, and people love it. I keep saying this, the deplorables, uh, the hedge fund guys, political operators, what they want is information. They don't want spin, and they don't want happy talk. So I'll now bring in Richard Barris from Big Data Polling. Richard, we've been going around the country kind of teeing up your, your appearance here, and I just want to go to some active things. Number one is Georgia. We had a report from John Fredericks to start the show off. We're going to get Jenny Beth Martin from Tea Party Patriots, who's da actually down in the war room to call in later. Uh, they're saying now, I think the Secretary of State is saying, with, when the ballots get counted out of Fort Benning or around Fort Benning, and, um, and I think Fort Stewart, which is near Savannah, when the, when the active duty military gets counted, which I think they're saying is uh, 9,000 ballots, when that gets counted, Trump will actually be ahead when all ballots are counted in this round between 300 and 500 before any recount. Can you walk us through uh, Georgia right now where you think it stands? I want to take Georgia first. All right. So, yeah, I would probably say that's the better bet that those votes will break pretty heavily for Donald Trump. He's got about a four thousand one hundred vote deficit right now. We just saw a couple actually leak leak in. So that was only about twenty four hundred a little bit ago. And now it's bumped up a little bit. So that was coming in around this. You know, we have the Atlanta suburbs. They're about done. But there are some absentee. Uh, there are some uh, military ballots out in Georgia. They tend to break pretty Republican. And that at least is more than likely we'll put Trump a little bit in the lead before the recount. Just a little bit. So how did this go? This is what you got to explain to the audience. What happened to the denominator? The other night, you and other people, you were at about 6%, but you said at one time it might be as high as 11%. Then all of a sudden the bottom fell out because 
just all of a sudden other votes started showing up, other ballots, 35,000 here. Just walk the audience through what actually happened and to your mind as a, as a as not just a polling guy but a statistician what happened to the flood of that increased the denominator right so all night we were getting a range of how much was left out and in fulton and in the cob and now we just saw another uh, county which is a little bit to the south rockdale they say they got a little bit more out as well you can see it right there this was 99 percent yesterday now it's back to 95. this is the problem we have these ballots keep just showing up i mean if you really don't want to be accused of something then you should do it more transparent this doesn't happen guys not in numbers like this so we're only this as good what as what I think, we know is left no but this is uh, to help the audience out here because you know people here you know people uh, tuning in now vote they don't they don't live and w look through the mechanics of actually voting or counting the vote how can you have a state as sophisticated as georgia you know i'm a southerner and atlanta's like the you know gotham city how can you have something that that is as sophisticated as georgia right the home of augusta national uh, you got Buckhead, you got, you got, you know, I know you got some rural counties down south, but it's a highly sophisticated 21st century uh, state. How can you have it that stuff just keeps showing up? How, what's that term just keeps showing up? Because guys are telling me today, oh yeah, we just got 6,000 ballots in from some rural county. How is there not some master uh, central repository that at least knows what's out there? Maybe they don't have physical custody of it, but at least they know what's out in the regional office usually we have some kind of an idea usually there's a deadline a reporting deadline and whether you're you're not allowed to count them at a certain time but you not i mean you're not allowed to actually count the results but you do know what you have and this has been a quagmire from the jump on this thing and you know you're looking at twitter just yesterday and curing ballots is one thing but you can't go out and get new ballots after the election and you go to say something about it you get you get pulled off of twitter you know but that's where we're at i mean we just not in these numbers guys we have never seen i don't know if you got the map up now we have never seen the cob tell us they're 95 percent in and fulton tell us they're 99 percent in and yet there's another 50 70 000 ballots floating around just do the math real quick guys that's not five percent Okay, it's not five percent. It's a quagmire. We really saw COVID used as a predicate for them not being able to do their job. So before we leave Georgia, I want to keep the map up if we can. We don't need to go back to, to us. Let's keep the map up for the guys in Denver. Uh, I want to keep these the map. The audience loves them. And I think they're very uh, illustrative. In your mind, right now, as we sit here at almost six o'clock or a little after six p.m. on the sixth uh, of November, the year of our Lord, twenty twenty. In a remember, audience, this is going to be remembered in history. If you think Florida in 2000 was big, this is t 10 times bigger. It's going to be talked about decades from now what happens in these days. That's why you need to represent. Um, where do you think we stand right now? And over the next couple of hours, will Georgia, at least in this round, before any recount, before going in and, and attacking any of these ballots, when Georgia wraps up, Will that be a couple of hours? How many votes are outstanding right now? And where do you actually think? John Frederick says the Secretary of State and others are saying Trump by 300, right? Yeah. But obviously that could change. What, what is your best guess as you see it right now? So he said that before, and let's leave that map up. He said that right before, and it's a tiny little county, it's hard for me, right before Rockdale changed from 99 to 95. So let's assume they have a couple hundred more votes out there. It could be Trump by 100. I'm not kidding. So Rockville just they just show up all of a sudden. This About little an county ahead. has a it's unbelievable. Mm -hmm. Ladies and gentlemen, you gotta understand something. This is the greatest nation on earth, the most powerful nation on earth, and this is what we're down to. Right? This is what we're down to. Little little county by the way, we're 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 little county guys. We love the hamlets out there, but there's just something not right. But right now, as you see it, Richard, you think they wrap this up in, in uh in uh Georgia in the next couple hours? uh it should be by tomorrow is what i was told uh it's possible but they basically were trying to give it a little bit of a push until tomorrow and maybe that's why maybe rockdale is why so maybe that was why it was apprehensive it should have been today but it looks like by tomorrow joe biden's gonna is he still on to address the nation is that now official is he gonna address the nation tonight 
Is that is that? Uh, uh, I, th- I think they t- tweeted early. He was going to address the nation. What eight o'clock, nine o'clock tonight? Is that still on? That probably is. I mean, I don't know, but Michigan, they, they want to put that away. Bye. bye. A decision Desk HQ has called this for for Biden, correct? They have. They have. Has this? I haven't uh, since the service has, has Associated Press called it. 8 p.m. today. 8 p.m. is Biden. Biden's going to address from the car dealership. You got a good good chance to check some new to, no, new Toyotas out. So make sure you get some new Toyotas. Uh, we'll be able to check that out. The feckless old man wandering around. Is calling him a feckless old man? Is that cyberbullying? Right, we're getting everything. We're citing violence, you know, cyberbullying. Richard, let's say, so well, let's leave now. Uh, now it looks like Georgia may be tomorrow. Okay, and you got to do tomorrow. You know why? Because Trump's still up a couple of hundred. There's got to be somewhere else that's got a couple of thousand ballots out there. They got they got the printing press going somewhere. So obviously, it's got to be tomorrow morning. Let's go to Arizona. We just had a live report out there. People are are fighting mad. What is going on in Arizona? And are, I want to walk through the math here slowly to see if there's enough votes out there for President Trump to actually overcome this lead. So we were talking with people out there yesterday, and I'm talking about their data crunchers. I mean, uh, earlier today, and they gave it better, a little bit better than a 50-50 chance, right? We got a couple dumps in Navajo, which is the Navajo Nation right there. That dump earlier today, plus what we got a little bit ago, is a little over 2,000 votes. It broke 66-32 for uh, Donald Trump. That's important because... He needs everybody he can to get out of Apache right here, which has a little bit left out. That's the suburbs of Phoenix, too, and that really will matter. Pima was supposed to come in better for Biden yesterday, but it didn't. Trump actually took it. So because they're burbs, that's, you know, it gives Trump a little bit of hope that that margin won't be that bad. And he really needs whatever's left in La Paz to offset that. There's a little bit in Cochise that could offset that. We got something out of Yuma just a little bit ago. And it wasn't great uh, for Biden, for Trump and Biden. It was about 4,800 votes, and they damn near tied it. So it really does come down to Maricopa County. He he has got to close that gap in Maricopa, and where those votes are coming from are not really urb. Uh, they're not urban Maricopa. It's suburban and rural that was later in the vote so last minute drop-offs and same day election vote that should be very good for trump it was three to one r and then even the uh independents that voted uh at that time period they were two to one so uh he needs that though he needs that to put it over looking right now how about oh god yeah how he's down how many raw votes right now about 39,000. And with Yuma, they split that in Yuma down here. So he was at almost 30, uh, 39,800 before. When Yuma came in, he just had a little bit of an edge. It wasn't big. So it really is going to come down to how well he performs in those uh, burbs and the rural areas in Maricopa. In Maricopa now, though, unfortunately, when we look at this math, He's going to have to do a lot better. I think your a number was 60, 61%. He's going to have to get two thirds, 70, 75% of the Maricopa vote that's outstanding right now is, uh, is, is how much? How much raw vote in Maricopa County? About 235,000 ballots. So, yeah, he's got to so do well. Have- and then he also has a little bit of uh, Cochise that can help him. And so he's got some, you know, and La Paz. La Paz did very well for him yeah, before. But, but I'm saying, I'm saying, if don't, don't blend those. Just, just, let's just stick to Maricopa. In Maricopa, he's going to have to get far higher than the 61%. Yes, well, sir. again, they're having the yeah. same issue in Arizona that we've seen in Pennsylvania. They have, don't have a firm number on the provisional. Yeah. So they have 142,000 more early ballots but they also say they might have an equal number of the provisional ballots out there too or a significant number hold it and, and that hundred forty two thousand is not is addition to what we got out there now no this is what he's talking about now but they're also now saying that they have uh provisional ballots that they have not calculated the number of yet as well so so, so what i'm saying is that when i look at the maricopa county of two hundred thirty five thousand, is that include all the provisional are the provisional ballots going to be over and above that well, it's unclear. There's, okay. This is what they're saying okay. from Maricopa County, that they have 142,000 more early ballots to process and a smaller okay. number of provisional okay. and other ballots, according so, to New York so, Times, so, two minutes so, ago. So, Richard, to, to, to Jack's point, this is what confuses me. You take the thing's got millions of votes. It gets through those fairly quickly. 
these were dropped off on because these are votes that were dropped off or voted on November third, right? Because they didn't have any late yeah. time. How are we now to Friday evening at six o'clock, which is three full days? How can we still be messing around with hundred thousand ballots, a couple hundred thousand ballots that are from that are from Tuesday when we've gone through and processed millions of other votes that have come in? How, how why did he have because for the untrained eye and for the you know just a little guy at home, it, it certainly looks like like Broward County and Palm Beach that somebody's holding back to see what's the number. Give me the number and then yeah, I'll, I'll make sure these things flood in. Yeah, yeah we so have there's a number of Trump. Here. That's what I, you know, that I, I, for the untrained eye, I wish I had something that was a little bit more comforting for them. But at this point, uh, I, well, who we're talking to, and I'm talking about Republicans, they say it's transparent now. Um, it's stopped, I guess, for people to get eyes on it. Uh, and now here we are. Uh, and they actually, on those provisional ballots, by the way, they do feel pretty good about them. They think they're Trump areas. So uh, it, it, we'll just have to see, though. But right, at some point, you got to just get through the 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 math here. You just got to get through it. When do you think? I want to ask the same question as in Georgia. Georgia now you believe is going to be tomorrow morning. The Secretary of State a couple hours ago thought it'd be like five or six o'clock today. That's now been bumped. They're finding other ballots down there. In Arizona, to your best guess, when do you think this thing gets brought to that every ballot will be counted at least in this first? And it sounds like they're going to have to go to a recount. When do you think the first round ends that we get actually the count of the, did Trump uh, carve back into this uh, 39,000 deficit? We should still get quite a bit today. And then uh, I guess it looks like we're just going to have to wait on Apache until tomorrow because all we're hearing on today is this next dump at Maricopa. Really, La Paz and Cochise, I don't know why they haven't gotten the rest of theirs and i thought we were getting la paz in full today but apparently we're not and we're going to wait on this maricopa bump right here and then we're, nothing and i guess at, at apache tonight i mean i hope i'm wrong is it, but is it, i'm not hearing it is apache is apache county have like a different set of rules than the rest of the country <laughs> they not have to like no sir i mean this is what i think is driving people crazy I, I mean guys are trying to throw themselves off buildings because just the it's kafka s right you're in this nightmare and the nightmare can't stop because every time you turn around there's another there's another county apache and this is what people i love arizona i've lived out there my brother's out there. The family's out there in Tucson, north of Tucson. It's absolutely, I love that state, and I'm, I love the desert. But you've got some places that you're talking about, Cochise County, Apache County. This is, they're tough. I mean, these are, these are not, um, these are not uh, suburban areas. They're not urban areas. These are, these are remote places. So Apache, I guess, now is part of the suburbs of, of uh, Phoenix, as this Phoenix expanded so much. But why is Apache taking so long? Does anybody ask that question? Yeah, no, they don't really ask. They're not aggressive, I'll be honest with you. I mean, I said the same thing, and I said, well, I need to know what kind of vote we're talking about, because this is the problem with them not giving us precinct-level data, so I have to pry it out of them. You know, wh where these suburban votes, they are in, in Apache. These are supposed to be suburbs of Phoenix votes. So this one, this is the dump that would have been better for Biden that we're waiting on that I talked about the other day. In Pima, that was the other dump that was supposed to be ugly for Trump. He won it, so it looked bright for him. This is what we're seeing. The later the vote, the better it is for Trump. I'm a little bit surprised that that, that dump in La Paz, or I'm sorry, Yuma, that just came in before we went on, I'm a little bit surprised at that. So already, uh, you know, that, that changes the equation a little bit but it was a draw you got it you got to think though team trump wanted a little bit of a net out of there yeah and then the rest that from what we're told the rest is really the big chunk is suburban and rural maricopa but we'll see I, i've never just is, never seen information this, change like this steve it's crazy is it richard is rich is this uh is is this within the 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 bandwidth of a recount right now or they have to go extraordinary and go to state court or federal court to get a recount was is this outside the margin of error for a recount 
No, it, it could be because I, I think it's actually likely because I don't I don't see Biden gaining any votes here. It's just a matter of how close does it come? They were they were still pretty confident that Trump would get it by about 10,000 votes when all was said and done. But uh, that last dump in in um, Yuma makes it a little less likely. But if it does end up, we're talking five, 10,000 votes, then somebody's going to get a recount. Okay, on our broadcast on Tuesday night, I want to shift up to Pennsylvania. On our broadcast on Tuesday night, there was a moment in time, sir, as I remember, this is before we started freezing, yep. that Donald J. Trump was up 800,000 votes in the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. I just want to repeat that. He was up 800,000 votes. In 16, we won it with 42,000 votes. Right, and it was always by the hair of our chinny chin chin. We we were never up eight hundred thousand votes. So eight hundred thousand votes to me is kind of insurmountable, right? It's like okay, you know, we're going to win this. Worst case, when you do the math, back of the envelope, two hundred fifty to three hundred thousand votes, which I think most people were, were doing. You looked at what was out there, and you did the math. You know, they they said there had been what a million some voted. They did the breakdown. Trump was going to deliver. The deplorers were going to deliver 2.5 million votes on game day. The Democrats, 1.5 million. They had 800,000 lead. There would be this. You cut into it. And at the end of the day, 300,000. You'd win by 300, 350,000. President Trump now is losing in Pennsylvania. Can you just walk our audience through? How do you go from 800,000 on Tuesday to on Friday afternoon? He, he's down. Uh, and now I realize we just got some votes and it got it closer, but he's down, what, 25,000 votes right now? Is that what it is? Down it 20, is. Down X amount yeah, or 14,000 14, now. 14,000. 14, 14, yeah. Okay, we count the, the 15,000 helps. So 14,000. Walk our audience through who are already yeah. banging their heads on the wall right now. Walk them through how we got here. All right. So even in – everyone goes right to Philadelphia. All right. But in truth, they've been – bringing in votes all around this surrounding area and you can see now monroe flip back erie flip back and there are allegations just so everybody understands there are allegations of the post office running in votes days after and backstamping these i've never seen erie county flip that big on election day and we're looking at turnout rates they're astronomical but all of this little bit at all these late arrivals chipped away chipped away chipped away and then got philadelphia in striking distance to dump hillary clinton uh had about 580 out of here in 2016 the difference is you knew what they had on election day there was none of this holding back the reason why everyone felt so good about pennsylvania on election day is because it was understood that they had about 560 in there as opposed to the seven and change from 2016 and then it that just changed steve everyone thought they were holding an additional 250 that night that turned in to a significant significantly higher number and then as did allegheny by the way where it pulled him down below 40 and on election night if you remember he was at 43 percent approaching the turnout level from 2016 this I is have the very problem important breaking, hang, i have very important breaking news there's a, a, a tweet out here uh from um from jack schaefer i think at politico uh trump's campaign on friday named dave bossy one of the president's closest political confidence to head up its legal team. The addition of Mr. Bossy as an attorney comes three days after the poll closed. Dave Bossy, my, uh, my partner in all my films, has been named the head of the legal team. Now, here's what's interesting. Dave Bossy is not an attorney. Dave Bossy is a former fireman. But Dave Bossy it ran investigations for Newt Gingrich when Newt Gingrich was Speaker of the House. And Dave Bossy ran the investigations into the Clintons. Okay? He was the nemesis of Hillary Clinton. The whole reason I get into the whole Clinton business was through Dave Bossie. Dave Bossie, if you go to your dictionary and, and, and flip to tough hombre, Dave Bossie's picture's there. This shows you Dave Bossie was sent out to Arizona to kind of get good order and discipline. They got Boris Epstein out there, others, Charlie Kirk's out there. Dave Bossie flew back in the middle of the night, got back here at 3 in the morning. And now has been named, Jack Schaefer Politico is reporting, that Dave Bossy is the head of the legal team. They don't have Dave Bossy there because he's, um, he's Louis Brandeis, okay? <laughs> this is not, uh, this is not, this is, but he is a, he's a, he's a, he's a tough hombre who never quits, 
right? So you, you, my point is, you got now heading up. He's the kind of guy that you get in a room and say, "Hey, gentlemen, we're heading here, right? Figure it out." And that's what they've needed right now. This is the kind of leadership, the kind of courage. This is the kind of pre President Trump likes Bossy. He's known him for decades. He likes Bossy because Bossy is a very tough hombre. And now you got Rudy on the team. You got Sidney Powell on the team. You've got other lawyers that are going to be named uh, lawyers that. Uh, are quite close to me, hint, hint, that are going to be part of the team. Uh, so it is, they're, they're, Trump is not backing down. Think, people think he's going to roll over and concede. Okay, so so uh, Richard, we got about a minute left here in this segment. I'll bring you back, but just give people your summary. Where do you think we stand in 60 seconds? Where do you think we stand in Pennsylvania right now? I think Pennsylvania's call was premature. We're hearing that 100,000 ballots may be challenged, and that would be obviously huge. And then there is potentially another 100,000 provisionals. I know it's crazy, and they actually think that may be good for Trump. They may lead to Trump. These were red areas that had problems. So it, I think this was premature. I tried to make my voice known. It's not my show. I got overruled. Uh, you're saying premature because this was a decision desk that that made that call. Yeah, we just get the you know we get the APIs from them you know yeah. and they make that call and it yeah. comes through. But the, there is seriously a hundred thousand ballots that could be challenged in the court and uh, yeah, I, I you got to wait on that. You got to wait on that. I don't I I don't know okay. who they would do that the other way. We're gonna take a short break. We're gonna come back with Richard Barris. We got a lot more to get to. I want to give a hat tip to another honey badger. The one and only Jack Maxey. That brother has been on these provisional ballots in the Keystone State in the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. He's relentless. You know why he knows people over there? Says, hey, they got provisional ballots all over the place. Where in the heck are they? This is going to come down. It's going to be a tight vote. It's going to come down to everything, right? And they're all going to get counted, particularly if people, this, the crippled woman with the daughter, you stand yeah. in line for six hours in the freezing cold, that vote's got to count. Absolutely. Okay, we're going to be back in a moment. Jack Maxey, Maggie Vanderberg, the one, the only wizard, that would be Richard Barris. We're going to come back, War Room Pandemic, to go through it all next.
with Stephen K. Bannon. The epidemic is a demon, and we cannot let this demon hide. War Room. Pandemic. Here's your host, Stephen K. Bannon. Welcome back to The War Room. We have Richard Barris from Big Data Polling. Richard, so what you're saying in Pennsylvania, it's still kind of a mess. And when are we going to cut through the fog of this? You, you think they t- the, the, she was talking, the Secretary of State was talking, she would be able to wrap it up today. I don't know how Joe Biden... Now that's down to 14,000, how is he going to address the nation tonight, right? It, it, I don't know how guys, or how's decision desk declaring him when this thing's very fluid. you got got 100,000, uh, they're going to challenge. you got another 100,000 of the provisionals that might be mingled in. Who knows? It looks like fairly chaotic, right? They're going into federal court for, for a lawsuit. How do you, as a, as a guy that does this for a living, how can, how can they actually come in here and call something when you're only 14,000 vote difference right now yeah the idea was that philly had a little bit left allegheny had a little bit left but i mean the bottom line is that's not even the issue they're how close they are even if they were to squeeze out another 50 or 60 thousand net between them whatever i'm just throwing out numbers there have been questions about ballots everywhere and of course trump is not just going to lay down and and not do anything about it if he succeeds in getting some of these ballots tossed then this can seriously change the equation i just don't know uh it you know i don't know what the well i do know never mind but there seemed to me to be a, a race to this thing really can let it play out pennsylvania this is not an early vote state first time really doing something like this i don't know how anybody would anticipate anything other than uh florida circa 2000 on steroids it's just it's a rate it's a race to the finish when it's all chaotic and that's crazy the, the Democrats at one time were telling us that this is going to be election season. You got to, you know, remember Zuckerberg said, right. "Hey, can't be called an election night. You got to go into a thing." Now they're in a hurry to jam this up on Friday so that on the Sunday shows they just they're going to bury Trump all weekend and bury him on the Sunday shows. Do you see legitimately the Secretary of State of Pennsylvania really having any grounds to call this thing this evening, or do you think this has just got to play through the weekend? Uh, that I guess really. I mean, she she can do what. I guess theoretically she could do what she wants, but that would be incredibly irresponsible. But almost as irresponsible as the attorney general tweeting things like he tweeted, right? So uh, nothing would surprise me at this point. I just don't see how you do that. Again, there are provisional ballots, which typically don't break toward Republicans, but it's pretty much everyone's understanding that those provisional ballots could be pretty Trump-friendly because of where they come from. So when you have this kind of a margin and then you have questions surrounding ballots that were counted, I don't know how you do anything other than let it play out. Okay, we're going to be back on tomorrow at 10 o'clock in the morning for our Saturday show. Uh, tell, Give our audience your best guess as you sit here now at 6 o'clock, 6.30 on, on Friday. When we come on the air tomorrow at 10, where do you think we're going to stand in Pennsylvania? I think they're going to try to roll it. I do. You mean you think they're going to try to call this tonight or tomorrow morning? They're either maybe some of the networks won't call it. I think generally, Steve, they're waiting on Fox to call this thing in Pennsylvania. I really think that there's a general feeling that they need Fox News to call this thing. And I'm not picking on Fox. It's just the truth. Everybody knows it. Right. So, um, to you know, that that really depends. You know, I'm not a Murdoch. I don't know. We'll see. But uh, I think that really there are enough questions that it would be irresponsible to do that. I want to go. You, 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 Richard Barris of Big Data Polling, think it would be irresponsible until all these ballots were entered because it's so fluid. Until everything's in and worked out, you would not call it, correct? Yeah, not right now. Not right now. You think it would be, ir- you think it would be irresponsible? I do. I do. Okay, you were, you were very vocal the other day about ir- being irresponsible in Arizona, and now we're in Arizona and we're still you know, t- trying to figure it out. That was called... Correct me if I'm wrong, Midge and Jack Maxey, was it 8.30 at night on Tuesday? Yeah. It was t- t- with the Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, f- three or four days ago. This thing got called. We got thousands of people outside of Maricopa County. They got teams f- They got teams fighting. They got teams counting. They got stuff coming in from Apache, from Cochise, from Pima. H- heck, where we were trying to build the wall, they got stuff coming in from down there. And this is three days ago. This is false news. False information, and yet none of the platforms have taken CNN's thing down or told them that they did this wrong. Or Fox, forgive me, Fox, yeah. 
No, no, one's, no one's gone after them. So I want to go back. Go walk through your theory of why that was done at that time, Richard, and, and what do you think it triggered? I want to go back to Tuesday night. Why was that yeah. so important at, that it happened then and it happened with... And correct me if I'm wrong, because I'm just doing the math off the top of my head. I think they had 73% of the vote in at the time, which the conservatives went nuts. But if you really add in the real denominator, if you really go back and add in all the ballots we know now, it was probably closer to 60% or less when they called this. Why, you had a whole theory. Walk through your theory why you think that happened. Yeah, I stand by that. I got a lot of messages over that comment. I stand by it 100 percent. I mean, the president was breaking the margin he needed to overtake that early vote everywhere. I think Fox did that so we could set the narrative generally that he lost a must win state so they could, you know, end the counting for the night. And then, do, you know, whatever happens later happens later. But they're standing by that decision. Now we see how close this race is tightened. Even if Biden ekes it out, is there anyone? seriously who could defend that kind of call which was made early when they left florida on the table for two and a half hours after it it was only it was it was for narrative it was for now fox knew exactly what they were doing and by the way they don't have they don't have they, have they called north carolina i'm not sure, no. sure they've called north carolina it's outrageous no. this is not even and i see where the firestorm is coming but hey they're gonna have to deal with it um I want to go to Nevada. Before we lose you, let's go to Nevada. What's the situation out there? That was a couple thousand votes. I noticed a lot of the headlines that, that, that Biden, the more you count, the more you double. You think that most of Clark County has gone. Walk us through the Richard Barris analysis of where we are and is this potential. Is Trump, does Trump have any path to win Nevada? Yeah, so some of the later breaking ballots did go for Trump uh, at a little bit better of a pace. But this widened out because we got more vote in um, in Clark County. And you can see now Trump's vote dropped a little bit below 45. And that magic number really is 45. There was a little bit of confusion there because they were supposed to halt for the time being. And they dumped another 6,000. There are reports, I don't know, I can't really be certain if they're going to throw those out or challenge them, but they put those six in the pipe, and now here we are. And now there's a little bit uh, still out in Washoe. Washoe tightened the more that there was, re uh, there was vote reported. What's remaining outside of Clark? Is Douglas? He does have a path because there is. It's it's a narrow okay, one, but it's on. there. What's what, what what what's the spread right now? How how much he's down yep. by the raw vote raw, raw vote count of what? He's down about twenty two thousand votes. About twenty two thousand four hundred six hundred, roughly around that. It's about one point eight percent. But but here's my point. We were we were in a situation that we were down six thousand, five thousand, seven thousand. Where you could six, you could see the path. With these votes out, now that you're down 22,000, are there enough potential pockets? How many votes right now do you estimate? And I understand they're adding to them all the time. Do you estimate total is outstanding? Uh, we, I, I really wish I could give you that. And if I tried, then Clark may come up with another 50,000. I'm not kidding. I mean, I'm getting used to this now over the last couple of days. Normally, I would tell you that there's probably, you know, 150 out there. But I don't know because this is um, a crazy situation, really. Uh, Clark was supposed to have been generally done. If you guys remember, that number was 95. It's now down to 90 to 98. It's just this is why you need precinct level information, granular precinct level information. They just, you know, just here's what it. I think is very different. I think here's what's very difficult for the Trump people to, 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 to not just comprehend, I think they comprehend it, but to uh, assimilate it. You're looking at these states, and everything keeps changing. You can't really get the, just, and we're talking mathematics, we're not talking, you know, some uh, uh, theory of English literature or something that's a pain. And the facts keep changing so rapidly, particularly in every direction. What happens is that ballots keep showing up, and generally those ballots, when they're showing up, are leaning towards Biden. So the stuff keeps happening, and now we're on Friday evening. It seems like for the last 24 hours we've been talking about hundreds of thousands of votes or tens of thousands of votes where we're dealing with millions of votes, and there's, it, it just the, the average person sits there and goes, there's just something not right here. 
You just keep uh, it, all these counties around the country, tr- principally and de- eventually in Democratic controlled either states or Democratic controlled cities, urban areas. Things keep popping up, keep happening, and when they keep popping up, they lean towards their candidate. And so, you know, naturally you're going to have people, and yet the mainstream media is sitting there going, he doesn't have any, baselessly talking about fraud. Baselessly talking about fraud. And they never mention, if you notice on MSNBC and CNN, they spend very little time. We spent eight hours with you the other night. We're spending an entire hour with you right now. They, 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 they cut in for a little bit of Steve Kornacki, which he gets his 60 seconds, or a little bit of King, and he gets his 60 seconds. He throws a Trump and punches the button. And then they're back to talking about how Trump's basically thing. If you, if you take their entire coverage of the maps and the analytics, it's, for a whole day, it's 30 minutes, maybe 45 minutes, max. Right? With no real analytics, they're punching the thing, and you see in Nevada, and they say something, and they move on, but they, and they don't connect it back to what's happening, one of the things were happening. So... Have, it, it, not to, I know you've never seen anything like it in your life. What could be the solution in the next day or two? And what can the president do as far as taking action that can drive this, at least in this round, to some conclusion? So then we know where, we, where, where these lawsuits have to go, where the recounts have to go. We get our arms around where we really stand. Because we know, and I keep saying this, Biden, if his claiming victory by AP doesn't mean anything. They, they have no standing. You know, the media sitting there, oh, he's going to claim, and guys are talking to the president that concede. The Constitution's a contract. The contract has a way that you elect the officials around the contract. And they have remedies. Because the guys that did it with some of the smartest lawyers in the world, some of the smartest lawyers in history, we're now in a contract dispute about how this is supposed to be adjudicated and actually gotten down to. And yet guys are talking about the non-legal process. Having decision desks or Associated Press call it. I don't care about them calling it. Uh, having said, waiting, we're waiting for Fox News to call it. Do you think we're going to have the Republic a thing on Brent Baer and that Russian dude, Arnon, whatever his name, Michigan? Arnon, Michigan, and Brent Baer and Lachlan Murdoch, right? Those are going to be the three. And remember, on the Transition Integrity Project, we told you two months ago when the guy gave the interview to Vox Magazine, the buried lead, 10 paragraphs down, he said on election night, the three most important people were Rupert Murdoch, Lachlan Murdoch, and Zuckerberg. We'll throw in Jack Dorsey, right? No, but they called it a month ago about, about the suppression of information and what was going to be promoted. And, and, and Richard Barris nailed it at the beginning of this. He says they're waiting on Fox News to call it. Fox has no standing in this. They're a part of the information warfare, but they have no standing. They have no, no, no official standing. And look, I've been a massive Fox news supporter for for many many decades and a you know a, a guy that thought the world of Roger they had more came. standing before 8 30 on tuesday night i can tell you that i mean our listeners almost to a man say that they are rejecting fox they feel like they've been betrayed by the one institution amongst the media that they thought was relatively straightforward well we're, and that's why there's so many people tuning yeah, in here, here which that, is of course yeah. why we're under attack this is why we got the ddos attacks this is why they're taking us down everywhere we're going to keep on vimeo through. twitter we're, instagram we're, we're, the, me. we're going to keep we're going to keep banging this up with the real america's voice guys mm-hmm. i want to go richard we're going to let you go i know you got a family you got to take care of the last thing i want to ask because we're going to we're on tomorrow we're going to try to track you down the weekend although we definitely want you to spend time with your children and your wife but you're doing a hero's work here um when do you think all this comes together over the weekend? Just leave our, our viewers. They're going to get ready to go have some dinner at the 7 o'clock hour. Uh, in their mind, uh, the deplorables, and people throughout the world, because we've got guys in Australia, Europe, the Middle East, China, everywhere. What should people think? How does how's this weekend going to play out in your mind? Yeah, I, I think, I mean, I, I really do believe that they wanted to try to wrap this up. So when people go into the weekend, they hear those Sunday shows that, OK, there's finality to this now and they can try to paint and pivot. And uh, I, I, I mean, the reality is what you just said. The AP and Fox News don't call the next president. We have procedures. The states handle this. They certify their results. And uh, courts hear challenges if there are challenges. But uh, I, I do think the American people are in for a bumpy weekend ride. I do, sadly. Richard, how do people get to your uh, – give your Twitter account, give all the access. You, you've become a real, uh, a real star and somebody people can depend upon to go through this. So how do they get to you? Right, so they can uh, follow the results on the map at peoplespunditdaily.com, and they can follow me at peoples underscore pundit on Twitter. 
Richard, Godspeed. Fantastic. Spend some time with the family. We hope to be able to use your good services over the weekend. You're a good Thanks, man. Steve. I'll be here. Thanks. I'll be here. Richard, Richard Barris in the uh, really in the cauldron. Guys, come through. Do we have Lance Wall now? If we bring Lance back in, uh, so Lance, before I ask you about the Great Reset, you were kind enough to sit through this, um, and you you are, are a one of the leaders of the evangelical movement. The evangelicals are the most decent, hardworking folks on earth. What are people thinking out there now when they see this process and they see what's happening and they see that you know new ballots are being generated and you know all of a sudden some county and you know the secretary of state of georgia had talked to john fredericks and other people they're going to wrap this thing up i think by five or six at least the first round trump was going to win 300 votes 500 we realize that's not a victory because it's got to go to a recount but at least it's a marker right it's a marker and now we're here. There's still there's still counties they're finding, and in Pennsylvania, Jack Maxey's been on these provisional ba- ba- ballots. Jack Maxey's been hammering this since Wednesday, well, and, and now uh, now voila! On Friday, we understand there may be a hundred thousand, a hundred thousand provisional ballots. And oh, by the way, they may unfortunately have been mingled. There may be some mingling problems, so they got to go unwind it. And what was very interesting about it, Steve, from what I could gather from the people I spoke to, these were people who vote every year. So they knew who not to send that requested ballot to, and, be, and so they're checked off the list. They have to fill out a provisional. But all the other Grundoons of Pennsylvania got ballots whether they requested them or not. There was a checking whether they mailed theirs in and decided to vote on game day. Maggie, something stink. Then, then, uh, the, the, all of it stinks. Everything happening right now stinks. And there's so much stink on Twitter, I can't, I can't even... Lance Walner, I want to bring Lance in. So, Lance, wh- where do you think the evangelicals, the decent, hardworking backbone of this country, what do they think about this? Well, I'll tell you what. Write this down. Conservative backlash, 2022. No matter what happens, there's nothing worse than taking law-abiding, hardworking, stand in line in the freezing cold, rally attending, pro-life Catholics and evangelicals, and then rubbing their face in a ripoff and telling them they're irrelevant. Uh, You have right now a standing army of millions that are literally coming towards you, coming towards real America's voice and saying, all right, what do we do? Because we're the guys that actually are lawful. We're not out there burning buildings down. You don't have to put plywood up to protect yourself from us. And they're looking for marching orders right now. We are, by the way, Charlie Kirk is with is, is one of us, and then Laura Beth Martin is one of us. The evangelicals and pro-life Catholics are ubiquitous all over the place. And I'm telling you, there's a backlash brewing. And uh, and we've gone through the same vicissitudes you've gone through. I listened to you when you had the date that would live in infamy, and I felt the same way. And then we had pikes on the lawn. I felt the same way. Now we're kind of finding some semblance of balance in the middle. And we're saying, you know what we could do? We could show up at these uh, where the voting, where the votes are, where the election uh, is being validated. We could show up in mass and we're a peaceful crowd. You know, we'll go down there with guitars and sing. But I do think there needs to be a demonstration for media because we're in the information war time right now. And we need to put on a demonstration that, no, we're not just going to be domesticated house pets. We're actually wanting our vote to count. We're going to show up. So we need some instruction there, Steve. The self-organizing nature, you know, so the live thing that uh, that Ben uh, Burkwam did, a great reporting he did for Maricopa County, one of the women there said, you know, we had a 96-mile caravan that just self-organized uh, over the weekend for Trump. You saw 54000 in Butler. The, the campaign had no money. All the outside events, the anti-communist uh, demonstration in South Florida that led to the Hispanic vote of 47%, these are all connected. It's the beginning of a great awakening. Do the evangelicals and conservative Catholics, do you think they're embracing that? Do you think they're sitting there now saying, hey, there's something greater. The most powerful thing in this two hours has not been Barris and not been what we talked about in the numbers. And he's fabulous. It's been that woman out in Maricopa County said this is greater than this is bigger than Trump. She's a Trump. She's got Trump buttons on. She's got a Trump hat on. She goes to every rally. This is bigger than Trump. This is bigger than Trumpism. This is the most important and defined. This is the defining moment of our generation right here. Whether we're going to let this be stolen, or whether you're going to stand up. Do you think the evangelicals and conservative Catholics believe this is the beginning of a great awakening? 
Well, I, I, be, I believe right now they're going through the classic um, response that the Old Testament Jewish people did when it was time to cross over into the promised land and they saw the giants and they, they felt setbacks and they were distressed. And, but soon enough, they rallied together and they were able to go over. There is no doubt. We've been, we've been on the anxiety fringe of the culture wars for a decade. Uh, and then, uh, then we began to realize it was economic and culture wars. Now you've got the war against the middle class. You've got the burning of the flag, the burning of Bibles. We look at it like it's an assault on our national identity, which is what it is. So it's much bigger than Republican or Democrat. It's a narrative of who America is. And trust me, these 30, 40 million people have a vested interest in seeing America survive. They're passionate about it. They're just law abiding. When you say they're looking for direction, to put, put some to define that for for a moment. I know they're home and they're and they're and they're they're worried. They're they're hearing now their natural thing of going to uh, of going to uh, Fox News is not the place they can gather anymore. Or they don't feel they can gather, um, and they're, and they're looking for other sources. They're looking for other places to go. But when you say they're looking for direction, specifically, what do you think they're looking for? They're looking to know, well, they, they've done the voting part. So here's the immediate reflex of my tribe. Everybody's in prayer calls now. That one thing you can count on, this is the praying people. So, you know, there's a great Bible verse that says, prayer without corresponding action is dead. They voted. And I believe you're going to see some 30, 35 million of those votes went for Donald Trump. Now they're turning around and saying, well, I'm just watching. Is there some place I can call? Is there something I could do? Is there some place that how do I make my presence felt at another level? And this could be the self-organizing thing you're talking about, because maybe that is exactly where we're at right now, where it has to be in these battleground states that there's this uh, self-organizing expression like you're seeing out there in Maricopa. And if that's the instruction, trust me, these are like ants at a picnic. They'll mobilize. Lance, how do people get more access to you? What's your Twitter handle or parlor? Or what's your, how do you get to your sure, website? How do people Lan get access? Sure, it's Lance Wall now, W-A-L-L-N-A-U, pronounced like Build the Wall Now. Facebook, YouTube, if they stop me on one platform, follow me to another. We got hundreds of thousands of populace that are looking for direction. Okay, we're going to have you back on over the weekend. I want to talk about populism. We'll talk about the Great Reset, the Party of Davos. You speak the language that we like here. Lance Wall now, thank you very much. One of the leaders of the evangelical movement talking on a Friday evening. Before we wrap up the show, uh, Midge, you're you're one of the top influencers on Instagram. You're now in the what Bill McGinley called the grind, Jack Maxey. This is the grind. Bill McGinley said it. On our stage on Tuesday night at about 10 o'clock, he says, you know, as we got to midnight, he got into the wee hours of the morning, he says, you're about to start the grind, right? On Friday evening, we're still grinding, and we got a long way to go. Your thoughts? Well, the war is happening online. It's happening on social media, the information warfare and what's happening. And it's crazy because, uh, you know, in the past couple hours, our AOC, uh, she tweeted, is anyone archiving these Trump sycophants for when they try to downplay or deny their complicity in the future. I foresee decent probability of many deleted tweets, writing photos in the future. So she tweets this, right? And then we have uh, two different Buttigieg staffers tweeted the same tweet. We're launching the Trump Accountability Project to make sure anyone who took a paycheck to help Trump undermine America is held responsible for what they did. Help join us and spread the word. So they've already launched a website where they're collecting names of lawyers, uh, people chipped in, uh, data guys, anyone who's actually trying to help fight back against this fraud. To save America. I don't know yeah. whether to laugh or cry. I've been saying it for six months that Maoists make less. If yes. you want something to scare the socks off, you read about what happened at the city of Huey in about three days' time. There's a reason why they make lists. And we know what happens with communists, socialists, Marxists. It always ends in murder. Yes. And isn't it funny how the party that claims that they're going to be a return to normalcy all of a sudden is bullying and shaming and scaring people with these kind of threats? So, you know, here's the thing. They think they're going to overpower people. They're not. We now know we've got about a minute left. We're going to be back on tomorrow morning at 10 a.m. We've got 
top lawyers. We got top analytics people. They're going through everything. They're going to go into the courts. They're going to play by the Marquis of Queensbury's rules, but they're going to play tough. Communications, I think, is getting better, and we are going to be the central repository of all that. We're not going to back down one inch, okay, as we drive this forward. We're in the grind. And remember, this is for the whole world. As Noah Webster said when he said, keep the Constitution, he said, miracles do not cluster, and what has happened once in 6,000 years may not happen again because if an American Constitution should fail, there will be anarchy throughout the world. So our global listeners, we are in the fight. We thank you for having our six. We'll see you tomorrow morning at 10. Midge, Jack, Stephen Gay Bannon. We will have freedom to live. We will win you surrender.